It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Wow, a few amens. It's good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen? Uh, Pastor Massey, I want to thank you for inviting me to speak tonight. It's an honor. I consider an honor every time I get to preach any place. Last week it was Africa. This week it's Revive. <laughs> I just want to share this one quick verse with you. It's a real jewel I found this morning. In Ecclesiastes 10, verse 2, a wise person's heart directs him toward the right, but the foolish person's heart directs him towards the left. Amen? Hey, can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? <laughs> And we have a lot of wise people here tonight. Amen? So tonight I want to speak about a spirit of rejection. And it, it seems to creep in at different times in people's lives. In fact, you know, if, you're, if you've been around at all, it's crept in in your life at one time or another. If you live for people's acceptance, you'll die for their rejection. Amen? I just want to say it again. If you live for people's acceptance, you'll die from their rejection. And sometimes that's what life seems like. Most all of us at one time or another have dealt with the spirit of rejection. And that's a spirit that goes into these little cracks and crevices of our emotions and hides there. Amen? It hides there. And all of a sudden, boom, it jumps out at the least unexpected times. Some of you today are still encountering rejection, a deep rejection in your life. Some of you have been rejected by your spouse. Some of you have been rejected by your parents, especially a father who's left or abandoned you. I know my own father said, I love you, Glenn, just two times in my life. That was it. So when I became a father, I said, I'm going to say that a lot <laughs> to my children. Maybe some of you have been rejected by your siblings. They've turned their back on you. Maybe some of you have been rejected by your family because you made a decision for Jesus Christ. And they've just abandoned you and turned their back on you because of the decision you made for Jesus. Or maybe you feel rejected because you feel your tribe has rejected you. Maybe in the workplace. Oh, you were expecting that big promotion I should have gotten that promotion. And now you feel rejected. Or maybe you got laid off or fired. Or maybe, you know, your boss rejected you. Or other employees that you work with. You feel rejected because of that. Maybe they know you're a Christian and they just push you away and reject you. I know one time I worked at a company that had a lot of Jehovah's Witness working there. And there was just a great big wall between me and a whole lot of other people. And many times I went into work feeling rejected by those people. Or maybe you even feel rejected at Revive Church. Oh, yes, I can say that. 
I'm a pastor. I know people come and tell me how rejected they are. They're rejected, you know. They come to church here and they feel all kinds of different feelings and emotions. And they feel rejected at Revive Church. Wow. That's a tough one, isn't it? Because the church is supposed to be all loving and everything. And then you come in here and you feel pushed away and rejected. Maybe the pastors rejected you. Forgive me. Maybe even I've rejected you. I've never meant to reject anybody. Maybe your best friend, your BFF, has rejected you. And now you're searching and searching for another good friend. Rejected by God. Yes. Some of you here even feel that God has rejected you. Because maybe he hasn't answered your prayers. But God's no is not a rejection. It's a redirection in your life. Amen. I know I felt rejected by God when my mother died when I was 11. She was a good Christian woman. And she was driving a car and a drunk driver was driving the other way and hit her head on and she died instantly. And for the next year, for hours at night, I would cry and ask God, God, why did you take my mother? <laughs> But there was no one there to explain to me that it wasn't God. <laughs> but I felt rejected by God during that time in my life. I did. And I cried, man. I would cry for hours that night, blaming God. God, you did this. Why did you do this? Maybe you felt promises were not kept. Proverbs 3.12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. So you felt like you had hope and there was promises and they weren't kept. Or maybe some of you out there, I'm looking, I'm looking, maybe some of you out there you had a false or unrealistic expectation what do I mean when you expect a person to react or say a certain thing towards you you expect it you expect that person you know they said so and so to me and now they have to apologize just this way just this way or it isn't any good and all of a sudden I have a false expectation of how they're supposed to react and I came across this verse in Job 41 verse 9 in the New American Standard Bible it says God says this behold your expectation is false you know, some of us have these false expectations inside. And some people might say, man, Pastor Glenn, you just took that verse way out of context. But I'll say this, the Holy Spirit has a unique way of revealing what scripture verses mean for each moment. He does. I'll give you an example of false expectation. When I was young in my 20s, a long time ago, last century, <laughs> I would come home at night after a hard day's work, and I would expect my loving wife to greet me at the door with a hug and a kiss. 
And if she didn't greet me at the door, oh, I would feel rejected. I would think she doesn't love me. I would think she should, she should be there waiting for me. Now, let me tell you, that's a false expectation, folks. <laughs> and it took me a few years to figure that out. <laughs> But I got to a point where I realized that that was a false expectation. And some of you sitting here today, you have some false expectations of how you expect people to act or react to you. And if she didn't do that, I was so rejected. Oh, man, you hurt me so bad. You weren't there. Why weren't you paying attention? You know, silly me, <laughs> silly me. Ephesians 4.13 says, we have not all attained to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. We haven't. But today I want to share with you what God says about rejection and what to do when it starts to overwhelm and overtake you. When it tries to control your thoughts and your emotions. First off, Jesus is our example. Say that with me. Jesus is my example. Jesus is my example. Amen. Whenever you feel rejected, left out, disappointed, remember that Jesus experienced rejection. He did. <laughs> we'll just go through a few things that Jesus experienced. John 1.11 says, He, Jesus, came to his own, and his own people did not accept him. Isaiah 53, verse 3, it says, He was despised and abandoned by men, a man of great pain and familiar with sickness, and like one from whom people hid their faces, he was despised, and we had no regard for him. Jesus was so despised that people hid their face from him. Acts 4.11 says, He is a stone which was rejected by you, the builders, but which became the chief cornerstone. And not only was Jesus rejected by his own family, they tried to push him off the cliff, right? His own church, they came and tried to push him off the cliff too. They all pitched in together. He was rejected by the mainstream church in Jerusalem, too. All the scribes and Pharisees there rejected him. So when you start thinking, oh, poor is me, just think, Jesus is my example. He was rejected. He was rejected. And Jesus tells you that you will be rejected, too. That's right. In Luke 10, 16, it says, he who hears you hears me. He who rejects you rejects me. And he who rejects me rejects him who sent me. So Jesus said that. He who rejects you rejects me. So Jesus said, you're going to be rejected. John 15, 18 says, if the world hates you, you know that it has hated me before it hated you. Luke 6.22 says, Blessed are you when the people hate you and when they exclude you and insult you and scorn your name on account of the Son of Man. Does Jesus say who is going to do that to you? You know, he doesn't. He doesn't say who it is. Maybe it's even your church friends. That's who did it to Jesus, his own church friends, man. Human 
rejection can be God's divine protection. King David was rejected. Psalm 2710 says, For my father and my mother have forsaken me. That's what he said. My father and my mother have forsaken me. But the Lord will take me up. I'll tell you, some people have been rejected before they were even born. When they were in their mother's womb, they were rejected. Maybe their mom sat there and talked about them all the time. I don't want this baby. Maybe, maybe you were one. You know, your mom gave you away and you were adopted by somebody else. That's rejection. That is rejection. Isaiah 49, 15 says, Can a woman forget her nursing child and have no compassion on the son of her womb? Now, it's a question mark, but believe me, the answer is yes, she can. There's so many women in the United States that have gone out and had an abortion and forgotten the, the child that was in their womb. Maybe, maybe you feel like an orphan today with no parents. Jesus says to you who feel like that, he said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Jesus made that promise. He said, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. You know, a father's love, God the Father's love, is a love you don't have to earn it. You don't deserve it, and you don't have to earn it. But God the Father says, I love you just the way you are. He says, I love you. You don't have to change. I love and accept you just the way you are. Humans may let you down. Humans most probably will let you down. <laughs> but God, but Jesus, he'll never let you down. He will never let you down. Amen? God the Father promises many times in his word that he will never reject you. Deuteronomy 31.6 says, Be strong and of good courage. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. For the Lord your God, he is the one who goes with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. In Hebrews 13, 5, it says, For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This one thing I can promise you, man. I can promise you that. You may be rejected by everybody on your left, on your right, in front of you, behind you. But God will never reject you. Jesus will never reject you. Jesus will never push you away. And it doesn't matter what time of the day or night it is, you can call on him and he'll answer you. So I just, I feel like there may be some people here tonight that are feeling rejected. That you've dealt with his spirit. And I know it might be really hard for you but I would ask you, if you're feeling rejected at all in any way, to stand up right now. I'm just looking for one bold enough to stand up. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. If you're feeling rejected at all, stand up right now.
If you've never experienced your father's earthly love, I would ask you to stand up right now. If you've never had the father that loved you and showed you that love, I'd ask you to stand up right now. If you've never had a father pronounce a blessing over you and say, I bless you, if you've never had that, I would ask you to stand up right now. And you want to receive that blessing tonight. I just, um, I'd ask my, the elders to come up. Elders, come up, please. And their wives, and their wives, spread out here because I'm get, the next thing I'm going to do is ask these people to come up here and have these people pray over you. Thank you for joining us today at Revive Us Now at our YouTube channel. Remember to click that subscribe button to Revive Church and share this video with a friend. And if you'd like to support this ministry, go to reviveusnow.com forward slash give.